Welcome. It's the 11th of November. This is Documentation Office Hours Asia. And we've got Diraj and I here tonight, today. Uh, items I had on the agenda, just three action items, elections, and the next LTS. Um, Diraj, any that you wanted to put on the agenda for today? No, I don't think so. Okay, great. All right, so then action items. I haven't archived the docs mailing list, and I won't for probably a month or more. Just, it's going to be that way. Monthly Jenkins newsletter has been published, the September one and the October edition. Uh, it's published as a blog post, thanks to, okay, that didn't help. Published as a blog post, thanks to the work of Bruno Verachton and uh, Alyssa Tong. So here's where how it looks on the site. Jenkins elections. Elections are coming. Uh, register to vote. I'm pleased to say, Diraj, that I can see that you're registered to vote. I was going to remind Meg because she's not yet registered to vote. I'll send her an e I've sent her an email. I'll send more. Uh, we're still actively recruiting people to vote. Nominations are open for uh, candidates, and the candidate nominations actually close, I believe. Let's see. No, that doesn't. That's how we how you send them. The instructions for nominating are in the blog post, where it talks about what you do is you send a message through community.jenkins.io to the election committee. And you include the name of the nominee, the position, and your reasons. So it's a, it's a viable place. Diraj, for instance, if you're interested in becoming the docs officer, here, there's an opportunity. Mm, that's a good opportunity for sure. But I've, I'm not sure if I would be able to manage it with the job. I understand that whole whole fully absolutely. All right, so so thanks thanks for in advance for thank you now for registering much appreciated. Next thank topic you. was the next LTS and there the new baseline has been selected and it will release in about three weeks on November the thirtieth. Um, we'll do a change log and upgrade guide, uh, and that uh, Kevin Martin's is going to create it. Uh, and uh, we'll review it in Doc's office hours. So I've been testing, and the testing looks good. Encourage anyone who has the time and opportunity to test. 2.375 testing is a good thing to do. Check for regressions, for issues, surprises. And Alex Brandis has accepted the role or has, has offered to take the role as release lead. Any questions there? Um, yes, a question on the previous topic about the election. I was yes. wondering like, what would be the responsibility of Jenkins docs officer and what's the benefit of being one? So the benefit is you get to do lots of work. And yes, I have to acknowledge that that means I just said you do lots of work. So let's find the description of, actually, maybe we can just click the link here, documentation officer. So oversees the Jenkins project documentation, enable and facilitate, whoops, let's make it readable. Enable and facilitate website documentation contribution from the community. Coordinate the website copy editors group, lead or be involved with the documentation special interest group. So basically, do the kinds of things that I'm doing. Yep, that makes sense. And um, yes, this is very helpful. So benefits are like you, you get a responsibility and you um, work on the documentation side of things and contribute to Jenkins. Correct, right? yeah. So the, the benefit is, is significantly increased visibility 
Uh, your name is then listed as the documentation officer. You can speak as the documentation officer. The documentation officer certainly can, can set direction or guide direction. Set is probably too strong, but guide the direction of evolution. So as an example, this bar across the top of the screen here, Gavin Mogan has done some really excellent work to make it av available as a web component, thanks to this. And this didn't used to look like this. And if we look at wiki.jenkins.io, it's also using something that looks like the web component. So that kind of improvement is a good thing for a documentation officer to be involved and aware. Did yes. that answer your question, Diraj? Yes, that answers okay. my question, thanks. Great, so what are the duties of the docs of the documentation officer? And let's just look to see, where did I put those? There we go, this one. So here we are. And then what are the benefits? And it is increased visibility. Um, and uh, permissions on the Jenkins document docs websites or docs pages. Let's call them what they are, GitHub repositories. So you become a member of copy editors and more. And yes. Yeah, plenty of work to do. Reviewing documentation pull requests, uh, encouraging new contributors, etc. Did that answer your question? Yes, it did. Thanks a lot. And okay. uh, uh, another question on a different different topic is related to uh, contributing to the plugins. So, mm -hmm. for example, uh, a, a, top, a plugin like Cloud Stats plugin. Mm -hmm. So, when I contribute to it, I'm just thinking about the things that I'll be learning from it. So, first thing would be the Hudson library, the its functions methods that is used in the plugin code base. So by contributing, I would come across some issues that needs me to look at deeper inside the code. And that would help me to understand how, like, for example, the node class of the Hudson library works. So this is an important benefit, right? It, it, it could be, it depends on, it depends on the specific plugin. So in the example of the cloud stats plugin, what you'll see is if you look at the, the class structure, you'll see, okay, there are things related to provisioning. There are things related to actions and statistics gathering and items. And so those are all things that are, are, relevant and those are those are important concepts in Jenkins. So yes, you'll learn you'll learn about all the things that plugin does as you as you try to help with it. Now one good way to explore it is to go look at its tests and watch its tests run in a debugger to see where do they go and what do they do. Another is just to play with the plugin. Now, Cloud Stats plugin is a little complicated to play with because you need a cloud provider, and that means you've got to have a Jenkins that you're connecting to the cloud. But uh, you've probably got access to OpenStack, or rather OpenShift, in your working environment, so that may not be as difficult as it could be for others. I see. So this is a little complex, yes. Yeah, because it's because it's well, you can see what it's saying. It's right. The plugin collects activities of other plugins and displays them. It visualizes them, mm. and so that means you have to have this plugin plus 
at least one other plugin. And so, for example, you might check to see if there is an OpenShift plugin, and there is an OpenShift pipeline plugin. And so that may, I'm not sure that that is provisioning anything with OpenShift. I think the OpenShift provisioning may entirely be done with the Kubernetes plugin because OpenShift is at its heart a, yeah, so this is, these, these statements look like they are, They look like they're specific to an OpenShift build, so that I suspect OpenShift's agent allocation is probably done by Kubernetes. Oh, yeah, here we go. Okay, so the Red Hat themselves describes the Jenkins, the OpenShift container platform and they provide inside of it a Jenkins controller. So this one would probably already provide you OpenShift um, inside the container and you can use it. So you may be able to just on your corporate OpenShift container platform, go get this image and run it. Oh, so it's that easy. Just a podmin command to pull the image. It, well, it may be that easy. I'm, I've not done it. I don't have access to an OpenShift cluster, but, mm -hmm. but I think it's worth you exploring it to see. Now, it looks like the Jenkins images only exist in 4.10, not 4.11. So, so that may indicate that you may have to talk to people inside of Red Hat to see, hey, what have they what's what's their decision it may be that they've stopped delivering the jenkins images as of 4.10 is the last one they deliver yes i'll do that um and when you try so when you don't know about a plugin you want to understand how it works so the probable places you would try to find out about it would be the plugins.jenkins.io page for that plugin, right? And, right? Yes, that's, a, that's certainly a very good place to start. That's the, that's the most sensible first place to start. So if we look at Cloud Stats plugin, we can see here's the documentation for the plugin. It talks about integrating it. It talks about essential concepts. And then it provides us how many installations there are and links to its open issues. So here you see its open issues and links to its GitHub repository. And in this particular case, it also includes links to its to issues opened in GitHub. Some plugins choose to manage their issues with GitHub. This one has done that and yet still has some issues left in the uh, in the Jenkins Jira instance. So yeah, yes. plugins.jenkins that I was a very good place to start. All right. So I think when I understand about how it works and every most of the basic stuff about this plugin, I think what I should be contributing is a tutorial on um, how to integrate it with other plugins, as it says in the second paragraph of this page, something like that. Okay, and that's that's certainly an interesting topic, right? Because there are a number of cloud plugins, and it may be that several of them are not integrated with the Cloud Stats plugin. For example, let's see. I was just looking at this one earlier today. There's a VirtualBox plugin. Let's see if it, can, it calls itself a cloud plugin. Yeah, yes. So, so this one, VirtualBox, is a virtual machine technology provided by Oracle. 
open source. And this open source virtual machine technology lets you run virtual machines on commodity hardware like a Windows computer or a Linux computer and on exotic, more exotic hardware like Solaris on Spark. And, and so this, you might, I would suspect it probably has not been, had any implementation of cloud stats put into it. So you could use that as your test case. And then you can run VirtualBox locally on your own computer and not have to be paying for cloud resources. Yes, that's interesting. Something to try. All right. Any any other topics you wanted to be sure we discuss? Mm, not really. I think these are the ones I have for now. Okay. Now there, I guess there are other places you could go for documentation. Maybe that's a that's a worthwhile thing. So, for this particular plugin, it doesn't have a pipeline component as far as I can tell. So there's not a reason to check the pipeline documentation, but let's, let's look just to be sure. So here on Jenkins and on the Jenkins documentation page, if we go to documentation pipeline and here in the pipeline syntax reference, nope, nope, in the pipeline steps reference, we search for Cloud stats or cloud statistics. And it doesn't look like it's got any pipeline implementation. I'm not sure how cloud cloud statistics how cloud statistics would be usable in pipeline, so that's not a big shock. Uh-huh. Any other questions or any other topics you wanted to be sure we discussed, Dear Um, uh, No, that's all. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and say let's call this done. I'll stop the recording and...